What's up, Doc? Oh, the audio filtering must be weird with that. Anyway. Um, I think I kind of picked up on something Uchikoshi was trying to go for here. Um, Haruka's a jellyfish. You see, when I first heard that, when she first said, I have no heart, I immediately interpret that as like, oh, so you're like the Tin Men. Is she a robot? But then I real, but then like today I realized, oh, jellyfish have no heart and they can reproduce by cloning. They don't have to, but they can. And Haruka is commonly associated with the sea. And if you look at her art assets, like, you kind of see, the, they can, you kind of guess that they're kind of going for that kind of motif here. So, I don't know. Another thing, when I went through, like, this, this, um, I don't know, Haruka route, the, Yuka, the first playthrough, when I did Yuka's route, I noticed that Makoto gives, gives this comment to Kurumi when they're at Viewpoint Park. I'm sure, like, Haruka has a flat chest also. And Kurumi responds like, did you just say flat? Well, now I get what he's kind of going for there, too. Um, thirdly, that joke Yuka makes where he, where she chokes Makoto, that was supposed to be like when you choke him, he, he starts talking funny and his face turns red, like he was drunk and that was the idea, but it was completely and utterly lost on me. I was just like, what? You choked him out? It was because I was thinking about like drawing the scene. It was like, so you would draw him with his face all red because he's being choked. Oh. Oh, okay. Anyway. So, I don't really like this theme they're going for here. Because Makoto has this thing he's trying to think, right? What makes Haruka unique from her sister? What makes her her own unique person, aside from who she's a clone of? And this is a silly question, of course. If you have two twins, they end up very different because there's no way they can possibly be in the same place at the same time. Physics doesn't allow it. So they inevitably have to have different life experience and see things through literally different eyes and be literally different places. And so they have to diverge because of that. Right? You're not... you. Your characteristics are not only built on genetic predisposition, but also, well, I'm not getting into epigenetics too much here, but also your memories you have and the things you know from your life experience beforehand. So Haruka has had a lot different life than Kurumi. She was raised most of her life by different parents and than Kurumi. And... Went to a, maybe do it to a different school. I don't know. She sure acts a whole lot different, right? So there really isn't a question here, right? She's different because she's had a different life, even though she has the same genes. Like no one asks twins, what makes you unique? What makes you like deserving of, like what gives you a distinction in the like eyes of God and man as a different person? You don't ask this like silly. It's right. It's like I have a different mind with a different stream of consciousness, with different experiences. How are you saying that there's no difference between me and my twin? It's a silly question. But for some reason, Makoto decides to answer it as, because I'm her boyfriend. And I'm not Kurumi's boyfriend. And her identity is found in me because I, choose, I chose her. That's really arrogant and makes no sense. Like, who are you even? 
I guess because you are the protagonist of a video game, who you choose matters. I'm tempted to change to turn the, like the, the noise filter off so it, it 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 sounds like I'm chewing carrots because I am. So anyway, this is dumb. Like I said, I tend to kind of ignore the romance dialogue or monologue because it's like I don't really care nor really want to hear what Uchikoshi has to say about romance. I don't want to know all these idealized, picturesque, not real life things are. It just bugs me. So, I did stuff off recording. As you can probably tell, I, immediately upon starting recording, I had this art asset up. And I hadn't, you hadn't seen this art asset before. And that's because, off recording, I was trying different combinations of different places to search for Haruka at the end of Haruka's ending. Because, like with, with Yuka, right? You get the bad ending by making bad choices at the end. You have these three choices you have to make at the end, and if you fail one of those three, you get a bad end. So I thought, oh, Haruka, it's the three choices at the end, if just analogously, right? And those three choices at the end are where you look for her. Oof. Went down the wrong way. Um, I heard it's like a noob thing to eat on recording or streaming. I'm just like, I don't care. I don't care what society expects of me. I'm going to do what I want. So, I, so but in, in the process of this, I actually went back to kind of before the loop. And I stumbled upon a sequence that got this art asset, which was unique and different from any other time. And immediately I hit this and go, oh no, this is something new. I better stop doing stuff off recording. I better record again. Which, but I didn't save scum it. So I have to repeat this off memory. And it's been several hours since then. And I may not do it right. So there might be some frustration going on here. We'll see. Um, and hopefully we can hit this ending. So we're gonna start up from um, Yeah, I'll start from here. So I offer I always offer my hand on Haruka. Okay. Okay, I'll let seem to crash the game. Not exactly. Okay. Then we do the loop. Okay, skip to the next choice. Of course, I think is what I picked. And then call out to Saki. I think this is the linchpin. Get Haruka out of here. Haruka and I trust each other. I have a little headache. Then I think I went Viewpoint Park, Moon Beach, and then I ended on Princess Beach. Now, I don't know if this will work. Might have to variate it a little bit. Let's see if it works. Flop. When I come to my senses, it has begun to rain. As if that first drop were a signal, innumerable raindrops come falling from the sky all at once. My clothes get wet and cling to my skin, freezing my whole body. The rain crashes down the asphalt crashing down the asphalt becomes a thin fog and the cold wet air pierces my nose. This is exactly the same smell from that time. That smell from the day of pouring rain. Haruka is in the middle of this intense downpour. My heart feels like it's been crushed. My impatience has grown so strong that I can't even breathe very well. If I find Haruka quickly then, she won't, she won't, she won't. That's not an illusion. As if bathing in the rain, Haruki, Haruka stands on the shoreline road with her head lifted and her arms spread out. This reminds me of like a silly video skit that my classmates made in high school. And it was supposed to be about 
a like an era of literature called naturalism. And basically they talk to each other about naturalism means by going camping. And this character, I think I remember his name, but I'm not gonna say it on recording, of course, is lost in the woods and it's kind of it turns into the survival thing until it's raining and he's standing on the road. And he puts his arms outstretched like a crucifixion and raises his head up in the air in the rain. And then dramatic music plays. And then suddenly someone says, bus. And a bus comes and runs him over. And that comes from the stereotype of naturalism where the, the, the story inevitably ends with the character getting run over by a bus. So like with this, Haruka is standing on the road in the rain making a crucifixion pose, is about to get hit by a car. Haruka. Haruka. Haruka! At the sound of my voice, Haruka slowly turns around. The pain look in her eyes makes my chest tighten up heavily. Makoto. So the real deal, the truly, truly is, the better one, after all. Again, have you heard of the twins, Haruka? Do you argue if one of those is the real one and which is the fake? Same thing. You could argue, well, it's because the reason why they created her was because Kurumi existed in the first place. And like twins would just kind of happen. And then when they got Kurumi back, they thought they couldn't hide that Haruka was the clone. So they decided to give her away. But that's, I, I don't know. Yeah, she internalized that. Maybe that's how you kind of argue it. You knew who Kurumi was? You're wrong, Haruka. You're the one I love. Again, with this plot thing, where somehow you're important because this boy happens to like you. That's what makes you important. Or that's what makes you, like, worth something. Blech. I really believe that you'd say that. I thought that if it was you, that you'd say that. Haruka? Are you mad? No, I'm not. I think that you made a misunderstanding about Kurumi and I. Yes, I can see now that I was wrong. Huh? When I saw Kurumi smiling like that with you in the room, my head went completely blank. That's why I'm telling you you're wrong. I know, but will you hear me out? And so, I didn't know what I should do. As I thought, I was no good at all because I'm not the real one. Haruka! Didn't I tell you ne to never say that again? Well, who are you to say what she can and can't say? Her sincere gaze bore straight into me as if she's trying to bring something to my attention. I looked for you. I looked for you because I was worried to death about you. Because I don't want to lose my most precious person. Ha ha ha. That phrase comes up again. I wonder if every ending, it's going to talk about losing the precious person. Or another one, or mine, or whatever. Some sort of... Something precious person. I'm alive, aren't I? Here. And this is the new art asset. When I got to here, I was like, oh, I, I got the good... I'm getting, like, a different ending, and so I quit. Right, and started recording. So I only did, like, 20 minutes of stuff not recorded. When she says that, Haruka takes my palm and pushes it against her chest. I didn't know, I don't know what about that unique combination of choices leads to this. It might just simply be, call out to Saki is the answer. That's the one you have to change. I think that's the only one different from the tips I've been trying over and over again. I don't know why that would matter, but that's the one you choose, apparently. When she says that, Haruka takes my palm and pushes it against her chest. Thump, 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 boom, boom, boom. boom. Ba boom ba boom ba boom Anyway. It's like a Telltale Heart audiobook. The sound of Haruka's heart is transmitted to my hand. The echo of her life. The trembling of her soul. The proof that she's alive. <laughs> okay. And now a jellyfish. What's wrong? Didn't you have a headache? Haruka's playing dumb, making fun of me. But she's not doing it out of ill will. I know that. Her heartbeat is telling me that. So you really were the one with the medicine. I was outside when I was hit by the night wind. 
It then started to rain, so I calmed down a bit and then realized it. I was jealous. Since I didn't understand that concept until recently, I didn't know what to do with my own feelings. I didn't know how to handle my growing jealousy. Um... You say that, but weren't you jealous of Kurumi when they decided to allow different people adopt you? Didn't you kind of understand what was going on there? I've changed since meeting, meeting you. I have, I've understood that I can live as my own self. So Kurumi and I are different, right? It's, it's, it's fine if I trust you, right? Yeah, that's right. Didn't I tell you on the pier? To me, you are the most important existence of the whole world. Someone that can never be replaced by anything. Koto? I embrace the cold, soaking wet Haruka in the pouring rain. My hands tremble as I feel the remaining sensation of her heartbeat. So, is it going to be this thing where it's like, she doesn't run up, to run out to save the dog because she doesn't notice? Because you're kissing? <laughs> right now, Haruka is within me. Her heartbeat has engraved itself within me. This is getting really cheesy. A gentle light seems to begin driving away the darkness before our eyes that wrapped us up. Headlights. Something happened. Haruka, can I ask you something? Why is it that you love rain? No water so much. So I'm a peanut butter and jellyfish. Yes, that was a Lincoln Park thing. The jellyfish song. Anyway. No, you don't need to force yourself to say it if you don't want to. I'm just a little curious. More carrot cracking. It's a bond. A bond? Yes, a bond. I remember almost nothing about my real father, but the only memory I have of him is us together in the water once. No, it might just have been... It might just have been my father in the water. Or just me in the water. Anyway, that is the only vivid image of him I have within me. Your father and the water? So that's why I love water. It's the only bond between me and my father. Hey, don't forget that I'm here, also here now. <laughs> I want a piece of this. I gently, I tightly embrace Haruka. I don't understand. The, his, her father has to give you, to give her to you, okay? You can't just take her. Well, maybe in the 21st century, people are all, are all, I don't know, immoral like that. I won't. I'm really happy. Well then, shall we head back then? Haruka nods. We separate our bodies from each other, but make up for it by holding hands. Haruka's small palm is covered in pleasantly cool, comfortable water. Okay. Usually we would say, it's wet. Or dare I say, moist. Just like that, we begin to walk towards the lodge. Ugh, it's cold. If I get a cold from this, then I guess it's your fault, right? A smile arises on my face while I make a sarcastic quip. Of course, I just said it was a joke, but Haruka. <laughs> Wait, did that go through? A little bit. Okay, suddenly it looks like she's about to cry. I'm sorry, it was just a joke. This is enough to make you catch a cold. I hastily apologize to her. Just then. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I'm not crying. You are! Uh, that was cruel. When did you learn how to make crocodile tears? Well, it's a secret. From Karumi. Haruka, your personality seems to have changed somewhat. You're the one who changed, right? Me, huh? That's cliche. I instinctively smile. <laughs> okay. <laughs> our laughter begins to merge in the sound of the rainfall. Although we're soaked to the bone and our bodies are shivering from the cold, we are the happiest people in the world at this moment. But... Our happiness was not to last. But ellipses happen. Ah, that puppy. In that instant, I feel like I've been knocked down to the pits of hell. Hope changed into despair. It's the second coming of my previous nightmare. Down the road is Saki, frozen in place with an umbrella in hand. The puppy then runs towards her at full speed. Car approaches from the other side of the curve. Bright red car with its headlights lit. Puppy seriously runs without looking aside. He hasn't noticed the car, can only see Saki, who's right before its eyes. The sound of the car's horn force pierces my eardrums. At that same time, Haruka shakes off my hand and starts running. Save the game! <laughs> right here in this upper right corner. 
So I know there's a right and a wrong answer here. You have to pick, like, the right one. Hmm. Well, I saved, didn't I? Good, so I can pick either one now, right? <laughs> I'll protect the puppy! I will not divide by zero! I can't just stand by and let my puppy die like this. Oh, that's not, not his. On the other hand, there's no way that I can let Haruka sacrifice herself either. Humans over beasts. Humans over beasts. Whatever, these guys don't understand. Which means there's only one way left. It's not like Saki's gonna be like mad at you for this. I reflexively rush out onto the road. I get to have a Haruka pick the puppy, the puppy up in my arms before she can. Makoto, like, oh no! no! Ah! Ah! In the next instant, I, I am knocked aside from behind with great force. I am... <laughs> I, I go rolling to the edge of the road with, while holding the, the puppy aside against my chest. I immediately leave my face and shift my focus to the center of the road. Someone pushed you, and that person got hit by the car. Haruka? That's right, the one who pushed me away from behind was Haruka. And she got hit with the car. Saki places her hand over her mouth, frozen in place. I can't move either. Saki and I are watching Haruka's body, which has been sent flying. It all happens as if it's in a slow it's in slow motion. Haruka's body slowly, slowly draws an arc in midair. Her slender body falls onto the asphalt face up, as if it's been thrown onto it. Time stops. Haruka lies on the ground, not even twitching. Her body is illuminated by the headlights, her pale figure sticking out in the downpour. The puppy slightly shakes its now soaked head, worms its way out of my arms, and jumps off of me. It starts to run over towards Saki's feet as if nothing happened. My legs won't stop shaking. I can't move my stiffened limbs. Saki is also silently standing rock still, oblivious to the playful puppy at her feet. I gotta briefly pause the recording and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I'm trying to multitask my YouTube recording with something. So, let's continue. Haruka? My voice has never trembled this much before in my life. Saki's eyes well with tears and she slowly shakes her head back and forth. No way, this isn't, this isn't. A red liquid on the asphalt catches my eye. Blood, a large quantity of fresh red blood is pouring out of Haruka's body. It slowly begins to spread, soaking the already wet asphalt. Haruka! It's also really slippery. I ring out a loud scream from within my body. I couldn't protect Haruka. Okay, new scene, a small possibility. No, I can't give up here. Something inside of me tells that. Haruka's still alive. Her flame of light hasn't flickered out yet. There's one possibility remaining. I'll risk everything on that possibility. You've got, I've got to go to the lodge should be the right answer. But I'm going to save this. I'll save it in this random slot where we... This choice doesn't matter, does it? Okay. It's got... It's the lodge. Saki, I'll leave Haruka to you. Uh, where are you going? Neither of us can give Haruka a blood transfusion. At this rate... Even if she goes to the clinic, Haruka won't have enough blood to survive. I entrust Haruka to the driver who hit her to go to the clinic and start running to seek the one who has the same blood type as Haruka. The original, Karumi. Exactly. Okay. I'm looking- if I'm looking for her, then she should be at the lodge right now. Well, that's so weird logic. I run through the pouring rain until I finally arrive at the lodge. At, out of breath, I enter the living room to find that Okuhiko and Yuka are having a party all to themselves. The area around them has become mountains of snacks and empty beer cans. It seems like Okuhiko has bonded with the very drunk Yuka. I firmly hold back my explosive anger and survey the room. Kurumi was here when I left, but she's nowhere to be found. Where did the girl go? Ask the non-drunk person, but save the game before you do so. Okay. Make sure it's changed. Yep, good. Okay. Okuhiko. Okuhiko, Haruka's in trouble. Just then, Okuhiko, who has been held down by Yuka, quickly stands up. What? What happened to Haruka-chan? She was run over by a car. In the next instant, I collapsed from receiving an intense blow to my left cheek. 
Okuyo's hit me with a very powerful straight left. You stupid, you stupid Edward, why did that happen while she was with you? Sorry. Apologizing will solve anything, so what should I do? Okuhiko. Shut up, I'm not doing this for your sake, I do it for Haruka Chance. This is the first time I've seen Okuhiko look so serious. He's really serious about Haruka's, forgot her, about Haruka's sake, whatever. I understand, listen carefully. To save Haruka, we need a large amount of blood, but the clinic on the island doesn't have any blood compatible with her blood type and stock. That's why there's, a, there's one other method, but to, there is no other method but to give her a direct blood transfusion. We have to take take it from someone who has a B negative, like Haruka or O negative. Oh, is that? I'm an A plus. I'm an A positive. Is there anyone else? Kurumi is B negative. If you need Kurumi chan, she went outside earlier. Did she go back to Luna Beach? I don't know. She didn't say if she was going back. All right, then I'll try try to go to Luna Beach. You search around this area. If by any chance Kurumi comes here. I write down the clinic's contact address on a note, give it to Okuhiko, and rush out into the rain. Ishihara, I'm counting on you. Fall out! No. <laughs> I quickly start running towards Luna Beach. I was gonna do it, and then I was like, that would be too cheesy. But I already started it, so. Fall in! Okay. If she's not here, the possibility sh she returned to Luna Beach is very high. And in the worst case scenario that she can, that she's not there, if I borrow the bicycle at the shop, I can search faster. Bang, 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 bang. Pounding the door to Luna Beach with enough force to break it. Yes, who is it? Seems that Azumi-san is still awake. It's me, it's Ishihara. Yes, yes, what is it? When the door opens, I see Azumi-san sitting there while rubbing the sleep out of her very drowsy eyes. Geez, I'm not done counting the stock. You know, Makoto Kun, would you give me a little help? No, now's not the time for that. Kurumi, is Kurumi back? Kurumi isn't here right now. She said she was going to visit the lodge, so... She didn't come back here either? Haruka was in a car accident. She needs a blood transfusion. Oh, is that? Haruka-chan's been hurt? Calm down, Izumi-san. So, what's your blood type? Unfortunately, blood type is O positive. So, Kurumi really is the only one. Ruka's B negative. Kurumi's, Kurumi's also B negative, isn't she? Izumi san frantically nods at my words. I feel a little relieved and restless at the same time. Kurumi, where are you right now? Even though, even though you're the only one I can rely on right now. What should I do? Izumi san, stay here. If by any chance Kurumi and I miss each other and she comes back, I want you to take her to this clinic. Quickly write down the address of the clinic Haruka's at and hand it to Izumi san. Well, then I'm going to look. Ah, is it alright if I borrow the bike? Of course, the faster you are, the better. Save, save Haruka. I give her a powerful nod and jump on the bike. The sharp piercing rain mercilessly obstructs my path. It feels like everything in this world is trying to interfere with my actions. But I have to go. Even if the whole world turns against me, I will definitely save Haruka. Well then, where should I look? What place would Kurumi go out, of, go out to at this time? Hey, Makoto. Why would a high schooler go out this late on a stormy night? Calm down, calm down. First, I gotta think careful, calmly. I won't find her if I search blindly. Think about why Kurumi went outside. Remember, remember, remember. Remember 11. <laughs> remember Kurumi's behavior when I left the lodge? There's gotta be a hint somewhere in Kurumi's speech and conduct that should help me find her. The reason Kurumi had to go outside, what was it? To look for me, she suddenly wanted to take a walk. I don't know. Just look for you, right? Gotta save, though. Put a Kurumi thumbnail. Yeah, but saved. Okay. She's after you. I, I believe it's to look for me. Right. Suddenly, Kurumi's words fly by my mind. Don't tell me she went out in order to look for me. So Kurumi wants to make as many memories as possible with you and the others in the time we have left. Kurumi Kurumi came to see me. Since I'm going back tomorrow, since she might not be able to see each other again. But even if that's true, that still doesn't give me any specific clues to Kurumi's whereabouts. At any rate, it's already been more than two hours since I left the lodge. Uh oh. That was an awkward pause. Um, I'll start around here first. 
To search further away would be a waste of time. Once again, I push my body weight on into the pedals. Haruka, is Haruka still alive? If my memories are correct, then my watch alarm should go off shortly after Haruka dies. That's certainly 4.30. There's no mistake. Because the alarm was set for the time I went to go see, see the Shinari with Haruka, so that means for my time limit, I have two and a half hours left. Where do I look? Where should I look? My hands are grasping the handles, grasping the handles slip. My legs get twisted from pedaling the bike. Although it seems like I'm about to fall countless times, I don't slow down. Kurumi, Kurumi, where are you? Where are you right now? Tell me, Kurumi. Wow. Really propagating far here. I would try Viewpoint Park, personally. Where should I head next? Princess Beach. Where should I head next? Moon Beach. Where should I head next? Luna Beach. Ride the bike at full speed. Kurumi, answer me! My cries are down out by the noise of rainfall. It's even hard for me to hear myself. I instinctively start complaining about Kurumi, but back then, I was the one who abandoned her and left to watch. If I had been nicer towards her, then this probably wouldn't have happened. I bite my lips and recomm recommence my search for Kurumi. When I come to my senses, it has brought me to a standstill in the middle of the road. Over there is the scene of Haruka's accident. Although the rain has washed most of it away, there are still painful traces of blood on the asphalt remaining. As usual, usual the rain shows no signs of stopping. If anything, it's grown, only grown stronger. My entire body is soaked as if I've been through a waterfall. I feel completely frozen and numb. My hands grasp the handles, my feet on the pedals. I can't feel them, I can't feel anything. I can't find Kurumi. I've dropped by Luna Beach at fixed intervals all this time, but there's no sign of her coming back. Even though I've searched so much, I can't find her. It's as if the existence known as Kurumi has completely vanished from this planet. The current time is 3.30 a.m., only one hour until my time limit is up. Is it too late now? At the very least, I might be able to make it to the clinic in time to say to, to stay by Kurumi's side until the end. I mean, Haruka's side. Or should I just not give up and continue searching, even if it's a useless endeavor? I won't give up until the end. I mean, there's no, like, way it could work out. You know, it could work out if you don't keep searching. There's no way that I'll give up until the end. On that day, that night, when I saw the Shinari with Haruka, I'll protect Haruka, I swore that. I understand, I'll trust you. Haruka's voice, that's right, Haruka trusts me, so I can't betray Haruka. But at this rate, this rate history will just repeat itself, right? And then will I be sent flying back to the past again? Next time I go back, I won't necessarily have my memories. I might lose all my memories of Haruka. And naturally, Haruka will forget about me, too. I won't leave. I also love this world where you exist too much. Suddenly, memories of Haruka go rushing through me. When she looked at me, her gaze, the feel of her arms, her warmth, her soft lips. Okay. I don't want to forget that. I don't want to lose that. So I gotta think, SMASH THE BELL! <laughs> For no reason! Am I forgetting something? Is there something important that I'm forgetting? Once again, I shift through the threads of my memories. Concentrate all my nerves. Flash suddenly runs through my head. The thing I remember at that instant is... I'm going to look for Haruka. Huh? I'll be back soon, so wait in the lodge. That's right. When I left the lodge, I distinctively said that. Wait at the lodge. I'm trusting everything on my last hope, I ride to the lodge. Just a little more and I'll be at the lodge. But if Kurumi isn't there either, I can think nothing but bad thoughts. And Okuhiko has it. Just then someone calls out. Hey, Shihara, I found her over here! Giyu's shouting voice brings me to my senses. I pedal towards the direction of his voice with enough force to break my bike's pedals. Okuhiko, where are you? My vision is obstructed by the heavy rain, so I can only advance in the direction of his voice. Over here, towards the lodge. Kurumi and Okuhiko descend the lodge's stairs, huddling close together. She's restlessly holding a large umbrella. Uh, where'd you go, Onichan? I was looking for you. For Kurumi, but Onichan, you left so suddenly. The umbrella Kurumi is holding out is designed for men. 
Could it be that she went outside to try to give it to me? But now is not the time to think about things like that. Hear me right in the back. Huh? Don't be pushy, Oni-chan. Just, just hurry! Once I confirm Kurumi is riding on the luggage carrier, I pedal the bike faster than I ever have before. I'll leave the rest to you. I can't make it in time. Can I make it in time? Oh. Fall! <laughs> now that Kurumi's riding with me, I head straight for the clinic. On the way, Kurumi's umbrella gets blown away by the wind, but I can't worry about that. Seems Kurumi has also realized that I'm not my usual self right now, and so she remains like quiet. I'm so focused on pedaling that I don't know what happened after that. When I came to my senses, the clinic is right before my eyes, but the bike's chains have become wrecked, so it is never, so it can never be used again. Kurumi, go into the clinic. I'm counting on you. Falling! Speed saver. This is going to become a thing. And then my consciousness drifts far away from reality. Erica, please live. When I wake up, I see Haruka's peaceful sleeping face before my eyes. That face, it's like she's sleeping beauty herself. No, sleeping face might not be the correct expression. Perhaps Haruka's... I stare at Haruka's face for a short time. How much time has passed? Unable to hold it in, hot tears spill over the f and fall from my eyes. My endless flood of tears begins to fall from my eyes onto Haruka's face. Haruka? Before I know it, I forget the pain in my whole body and kiss Haruka on the lips. Okay, whatever. Oh. It's warm. Haruka's breath is warm. It's warm! Good morning. Haruka? Sleeping Beauty was awakened by a kiss, right? There's so much I want to talk to her about. There's so much I want to ask her. But first and foremost, I just want to tell her this. I'm so glad that you're alive because you're my irreplaceable, most precious person. And I gently embrace Aruka. Her body's warped is ensuring her existence. We're gonna smash the bell again, aren't we? Oh, okay. Then we'll be going back before you. You two will be all alone, so don't get any funny ideas. No kidding, hey Ishihara, you owe me big time. The next day, Yuka and Okuhika left the lodge ahead of me. I'd expected as if they stayed any longer, it would mess up their plans in the near future. It seems that Saki has also returned to her own, own life. Aruka was transferred to a large hospital on the mainland, where it was arranged for her to receive a workup. Actually, her only major problem was the heavy bleeding, but of course there was no way she could go back like that. Besides, she lost so much blood all at once that her physical strength probably wouldn't return immediately. Of course, I decided to attend to Haruka. Afterwards, I took the ferry to the mainland and headed straight for the hospital. Just being able to be together with Haruka is fine. It's been approximately two weeks since I left the island and found myself enjoying this happiness. And so the next few dawn, day dawn, the next day dawns. Just past noon, someone knocks on the door to Haruka's hospital room. It's true that it's visiting hours right now, but who? Right now, Haruka is sleeping on her bed, breathing peacefully. Yes, it's open. The door opens rather quietly and the owner of the knock appears. So it's either Kurumi or Okuhiko. Izumi-san. Okay, I was wrong. Yes, the one standing over there is Izumi-san. That would have been, been a good guess, too. Izumi is carrying a fruit basket with apples and oranges piled up and quietly enters the hospital room. I'm sorry I didn't come to visit sooner. Kurumi has school, so she said she'll come on Sunday. No, it's fine, but Izumi-san, about Haruka. Yes, despite how it may seem, I was very hesitant. Honestly, I wonder if it's even all right for someone like me to come here. That's... Is Haruka asleep? Yeah, she fell asleep some time ago. If that's the case, then I'll continue my story. I've decided I should be honest with to my own feelings after all. On that night, when I heard Haruka was in a car accident, I was really worried from the bottom of my heart. Yes, a lot happened, but Haruka is my little sister. Our bonds of blood and her being a clone has nothing to do with it. It's not that kind of problem. Yeah, that's the thing. Izumi said that she thought Kurumi wasn't her real sister. But, like, that didn't make any sense, considering the context of this ending. Because it's Haruka that's supposed to be, like, not her real sister. But then she has to realize that she is her real sister. Or it doesn't matter that whoever's her real sister. But I don't think there's a question about Kurumi being her real sister. It's just she jumped forward in time somehow. I mean, she had to, because how can the clone be older than the original? As she says that, Izumi-san suddenly smiles. 
What a convenient way of thinking. But it's fine if I'm not forgiven. I just can't, just can't forgive myself as it is now. Suddenly large tears start falling from Izumi-san's eyes. Why don't you talk to Haruka about that? Huh? I can slowly speak again as if I'm trying to persuade myself as well as Izumi-san. The truth is that Haruka longs for connections with other people. Bonds, that is. That's why I think she'll forgive you. Makoto-kun? Well, I don't think you need to force yourself to tell Karumi the truth, but... You're right, I understand. Then I'll come again tomorrow. At that time, yes, please do so. And so the next day, when Izumi-san came to Haruka's hospital room, I excused myself and left the two of them alone. So I don't know what kind of conversation they had. I tried indirectly asking Haruka about it afterwards, she just shook her head and smiled. However, when they called me back into the hospital room, they were embracing each other and their eyes were as red as rabbits. That alone is enough for me to know what, they, what was said. And then one week after that, Haruka is finally allowed to leave the hospital. I'm really glad. For a while, I was really worried about what would happen. Saying back then, Onichan said nothing and took off with Kurumi on the bike. Kurumi thought she was being kidnapped. She was really scared. Well, you're gonna get your you're gonna go get your blood taken, so that would be scary anyway. On Sunday, after leaving the hospital, Haruka and I returned to the island to pick up the luggage we left behind. We gathered our luggage to the lodge, and so we are at Luna Beach right now, saying our final farewells. I'm really sorry that I worried you. It's fine, it's fine. All that matters is that you're all right. Right, right. You're okay, Haruka-san. So there is no problems. Hold on. You weren't worried about my body. That's right, I pushed myself so hard on that day that I ended up commute, commuting to the hospital for three days due to getting my body battered, bruises, and muscle pain. Oh, okay. Commuting. If you ruled out Haruka's heavy bleeding, I was in more serious state than she was. You were fine, weren't you? You're a guy, after all. You're like that boy! Yes, yes, you're a sturdy one, aren't you? Not you too, Haruka. I mean, the physics of it doesn't really make sense. You can't really destroy the chain of the bike or anything. That's not really how bikes work. It's not really how people work, too. I mean, he really, realistically would have been fine. Oh, it looks like the bus is coming. Well then, take care. Be sure to come back again. Yes, it's a promise. That's right, because... Your two older sisters will be here. Yes, thank you. Zumi-san looks straight at Haruka. Her eyes are cloudy with tears. And Haruka is the same. Uh, what are you talking about, Oni-chan? Haruka-san is the older sister here because she's with Oni-chan. Yes, you're right. You're a good girl, Kurumi. Yep. It's time for the bus to depart. I take my luggage as well as Haruka's and start walking. Well then, see you next year. Bye bye. Okay, and here's probably the other asset, art asset. Again, the main character's player character's face is obscured because for some reason he can't have a face. Haruka is waving her hand towards out towards outside the window. You're supposed to like replace it with your face. However, that doesn't work because I'm not Japanese. It's clear that she's going to miss them, and he actually does have a face because there are a few art assets that do put a face on it. But there's no signs that this parting is a, de is a sad one. Uruka's perfectly clear smile is bathed by the gentle spring sunlight. In that expression of her, something has vividly emerged. It's clearly her heart. Okay, whatever. Right now, Haruka might have finally been awoken from an eternal sleep that lasted 100 years. Goodbye, goodbye, my sisters. We'll meet again. And she is released from the curse of time. Okay, you can say that, even though it has nothing to do with it. From now on, we'll be able to repeat and do things over. Even so, even so, Haruka is by my side. As long as Haruka has her precious smile, I can keep walking no matter... No matter time may throw at me. Okay. Because the one who discovered their own existence wasn't just Haruka. It was me! Anyway.
So, so I see it's possible to get Saki to the hot springs. That's interesting. Hey, let's see, we've got Yuka colored in, we've got Haruka colored in now. This not kind of a grayscale kind of character design, but the clothes are an indigo. Um, we got the Haruka good end as well as the Haruka bad end. I'm pretty certain if you choose other things like go back to the, go to the clinic, or it's still going to the lodge and then kind of kidding give up, and you, you basically just get the Haruka bad end, right? Um, go to movies. We have... Good end original. Okay, that's what that was, I guess. We have five more of those. We got three more loops to go. I presume this is the Izumi loop, the Kurumi loop, and the Saki loop. Don't know what these two are. Tips. Look at the clinic. Dallas only a medical institution. According to the Medical Service Law, Article 1, Section 5, clinics were defined as an institution that doesn't hospitalize patients or an institution that hospitalizes no more than 19 patients. Isn't zero no more than 19? No, so isn't that redundant? 
The one on the island fits the first dis definition. In case patients are seriously ill or in critical condition, they need to be transported to the mainland via a high-speed ferry. Is that it? Heart. Japanese Kokoro, or Heart. There's a game where someone's named Kokoro. No, it's not a game. It's a webcomic called, um... Uh, something about go with the Magic Girl Girls. I forgot. I don't really. It's not really a very good one. It's Beehive. For some reason, I think the title has something to do with not sleeping at night. Sle sleepless domain. That's what it's called. Anyway. Poker or heart? Oh, it's they nicknamed your heartful punch. Okay, whatever. Um, it's not a very good comic, in my opinion. It refers to a place somewhere in the body that can be thought of to be the source of logic and emotion. So sort of like Hebrew, right? Brain is well, actually, Hebrew brain is like instincts, and then log heart is like reasoning. Okay. Or Greek. Greeks like that. Anyway, whatever. In other words, it's similar to the concept of a soul, because. People had the surprising inability to understand human anatomy in the ancient world. I mean, the Egyptians thought the brain did nothing. In the past, the heart was thought to be located in the heart, the organ for which is called Shizao in Japanese. As a remnant of this, the word heart refers to both the concept of the organ in English. Today, if you were to ask where the heart is located, the most likely answer you get would be the brain, but this is something even doctors can't clarify. No, all cognition happens in the brain. Doctors can clarify that, actually. The meaning of the word, though, yeah. I mean, the diction, the language might be confusing, but... Anyway, despite that there is no scientific evidence of its existence, at the very least, the existence of an illness associated with it, known as mental illness, can be acknowledged. No. Interesting. <laughs> Okay, there's some like cutting off scroll bar action there. Tail the bamboo cutter. Man. Suitor should refuse them all. Um. So they're saying it's one of those, there probably was a true story, but it got corrupted over time things. Wainbow toke for a dead person. Okay. Specifically in Wainbow toke is used to refer to a person who passed away that has no relatives or immediate family to give them a memorial. Okay. Alternatively, an unidentifiable body can also be called a Wainbow toke. Perhaps in the far future, we are all fated to be Wainbow toke when even our names are ceased to be remembered. Okay, cool. Universe, okay. <laughs> uh, you can pause to read this if you want to. I sort of don't really care what whoever the English translators or the game developers thought the universe was. Um, it's a whole bunch of waves, people. Water slide has an entry. <laughs> okay.
Okay. Yeah, I've been on a slide where you 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 write it just two two on a two person tube. That doesn't mean much, but at least I have experience with that. Hold the master blaster. Okay. We've seen more musics now. We're missing two. CGs. So we got all the Haruka ones now because we've gotten this one, right, as well as that one. Um, we're still missing some Yuka ones. So we have a set here and we have this one. So those are sort of mysteriously kind of sitting there. Um, and then we're missing most of the Saki ones. Most of the Kurumi ones. Most of the Izumi ones. And some of the barbecue ones, which is interesting. Well, I guess what we're try to do next is hit, hit a Saki route of some sort. There might be, well, it seems like there's a Kurumi route. That's kind of, comp so I did off screen actually go back and do a thorough search and found that, yeah, if you do exactly the same thing as I did to get the Haruka ending, but all you did is, is you went to Viewpoint Park with Kurumi instead of to the pool. then you do get the Haruka ending. You only get siphoned off onto Yuka if you go also go with Kurumi to group Crab Sumo, or if you go with Kurumi to the shrine. If you do one of those two things, then it will suck you off into, into Yuka's ending. So, so yeah. Um, also, it seems like if you don't go with Haruka to go fishing on the 4th, it'll suck you off into Yuka's ending no matter what you do. That's like required for Haruka's ending. Uh, so, but I don't know exactly how you would hit Kurumi's without getting the Yuka one instead of Kurumi's. I know how you'd focus Kurumi. That's an interesting point. I think I haven't actually tried... Yeah, I haven't tried... Um, doing Krumi all through. So that would mean go with Krumi to Viewpoint Park, then also go to the shrine with Krumi, then also do Crab Sumo with her. So that would be the next thing to try, I guess. So let's continue. Okay, hit this. The K button. Go follow Kurumi. Whatever. Sure. If this one's entertaining, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna K pass it anyway. Harass Saki. Go. Harass Saki some more. Say, answer something here. With me. Yeah, you did. That's wrong. I have. No, it's not like that. Because. Persuade her to calm down. Saki, how could you? Don't worry about it. This thing, which basically demonstrates that I is. is I is what you call. She don't care about plot consistency. I'm gonna make the story change however I want it to, depending on your choices. Uh, why I can't click, okay. What's this? This is weird. Sorry, sorry. You see, it seems like Karumi forgot something at the lodge. Forgot something. Yep, so go ahead, guys. Go ahead, you say that, but who will lead us? I guess I can. Wait, what? What did I do diff- what? 
No. Does it does the game do this thing where if you do it again after getting a certain amount of endings, it changes? <laughs> This can just mess with you like that? I guess I can. No way, Oni-chan. You're going to go with Kurumi to get what she forgot? Doesn't seem like she's going to let me have a say on this. It'll be fine. With the exception of Oni-chan, there's still one person who's reliable enough, right? Izumi? Wait for everyone, Oaken? Me? You're a guy, so it's only natural, right? In the end, Oka, he leads the group to a forest as he loudly complains. Kurumi and I have re re returned to the lodge. Kurumi looks like she's trying to suppress a mischievous grin. What's she up to? Hey Kurumi, what did you forget? Kurumi lied. Huh? Kurumi lied about forgetting something. Why did you have to cut us? Why did you have to us come back here? <laughs> That's it. I'm leaving. Hold on. Kurumi firmly grabs my arm and pulls me back. Now that you were alone, Kurumi will promptly brief you on the details of her strategy. Strategy. Right, strategy. Did you know that there are two types of ways to enjoy a test of courage? No, I didn't. Huh, really? One, try to get scared to your heart's content. Two, scare others to their heart's content. Oh, I get it. Right, and as you see, Kru as you see, Krumi was thinking she'd like to fully enjoy it by trying the latter method. You want to scare the others? Bingo, but in order for the mission to work, Krumi needs a partner in crime. And for that role, you picked me. That's right. Why is this happening? What? <laughs> is this because we picked Kurumi and um, Izumi when we were walking to um, go fishing? That one little change, huh? Well. Hmm. Therefore, Kuruma has deducted that step one of the operation is for you and her to become a pair. A pair? Right, in Test of Courage, it's general rule to thought for people to be paired up in groups of two, right? Well, that's true. That's why, when the time comes, Kuruma will suggest, let's try dividing people into pairs through rock, paper, scissors. If we do that, and it's our turn for rock, paper, scissors, use rock, okay? Huh? Because Kuruma is also going to be using rock. Oh, I see. By doing that, that means as long as we continue using rock, no matter how many browns we go for, you and I will eventually become a pair. Well, don't you think it's a good idea? Calling it a good idea is a bit of a stretch, but it's pretty solid. Well then, what's step two? Well, Kirby will have to wing it once we get there. Some plan you have already hit a dead end. Well, we need to go since Kirby doesn't know what kind of props are lying around. Props? Well, whatever, I understand, so you'll think about it. Yep, exact, expect, expect an amazing plan. Departing with those words, I once again force my way through the thicket. Wait up! Kirby jogs right after me. Everyone else has gone so far ahead that we can no longer see them. Grey flower is dimly lit, lit by the pale moon. Half the moss-covered tombstones are either half-fallen or completely fallen to the ground. The air is cool and damp, and in spite of the relatively warm weather we had over the past few days. As you know, everyone's buried here is a Mewbotok, someone who died without family or friends to bury them. Mune Botok? Now, does this fast forward? Yeah, it does, okay. That is the and I make on eye contact. Just as we planned earlier, we prepare to release rock. Ready, set, rock, paper, scissors. Go! Everyone releases their hands simultaneously. I have rock, Haruka has scissors, Yuka also has scissors. Oh, Izumi san has paper, Okuhiko has paper. As expected, Kurumi has rock. Ah, oh, for now, the pairs are Haruka san and Yuka san, Oni chan and Kurumi. And only Sean and Oaken. Okay. Rumi looks towards me and mouths a silent thanks. Let's do our best, Haruka. Yes. Krumi lays out the rules. There's an old well somewhere in this graveyard. Okay. Oh, we can't skip this. Two of you will team up to look for it. If you find it, sign your names on the wall of the well with a pebble or as proof. If you can do that, you can return to the starting point. 
It was decided that we should play rock, paper, scissors to pick a representative to choose which pair goes first. They would decide when the next pair would leave 10 minutes after the first. Incidentally, I won the match. When I heard that I could pick whatever order I liked, I immediately picked to go first since I wanted to get this over with. Tough, I, tough, I guess, now that I think about it, it doesn't really matter if I go first or last. Though I guess. Well then, group number one, heading out. Kurumi in high spirits guys my hand and runs ahead. Good work. Thanks, well then, what will we do? About what? About the plan. Truth is, Kurumi takes various things out of the pouch she secretly had. Ta-da. She takes out a flashlight string, a scary mask, and Koniyaku? Koniyaku? Just when did you get all these things ready? <laughs> what do you think? It's Kurumi. Kurumi magic. So what's the plan? First Kurumi will hide the mask in the well. I see, and then... Then if someone comes, she'll shine the light from below. Uh, and then... That is Sinoni-chan, me. You'll scare them from behind. How so? By using the Koniyaku and dripping it on their on their neck. Drip it? It's called the scary mask and cold dripping Koniyaku that is as effective as a diet set strategy. <laughs> That's a long name. But how am I supposed to sneak up on them? If they turn around when I'm holding the Koniyaku, I'll just look like an idiot. That's what the string's for. Oh ho. Oh shall find a branch nearby and tie the string to it and hang the Koniyaku up. And then Hide in a nearby bush, and then from there do it. Afterwards, that person will... They'll, they'll shake in fear, scream in agony, and horribly sully themselves. Kurumi's called it. Kurumi will call it... That's enough. Come on, Kurumi spent months perfecting this plan. Liar. But it's a good plan, right? How should I answer? It's perfectly good. It's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I would think it's pretty good. Well, it's pretty good. If it's Yuka, she'll be peeing herself. Right, right. You've just gained a ton of points in my book. Really? Yeah, really. Really? Really? Then how about a reward? Huh? A reward? Oh, what kind of reward? Think of it. Think of it yourself. Got it. You're such a good girl. Fat Kurumi's head like a puppy. Oh, geez. Don't treat Kurumi like a kid. Doesn't the sort of thing make you happy? It doesn't. Then what would make you happy? Well, uh... Oh, found it! <laughs> it's really loud over here, so I found it quickly. Jeez, Oni Chan, you idiot. Yes, in the middle of the quiet still forest, the only sound we hear are our own footsteps that we make. <laughs> that we make on this nightly stroll. We're walking back to the lodge with the Izumi san in the lead. I'm so sweaty. Yuka frowns as she pinches her clothes, which has stuck to her body. You can say that again. Okuhiko nods sympathetically at her statement. His face seems a little pale. Is it due to the pale moonlight pouring down from the sky, or is it because of the fear he, is, he was feeling just a little while ago? Well, it doesn't really matter. Ruka alone says nothing. She walks behind the silent Izumi san with a composed expression. Let's take showers when we get back. I suggest this to my fellow senior camp members. Yuka and Okuhiko nod in agreement. Okay. Well. I'll save this. Here. Okay. And that will be it. Um, but if we look at the CGs, we got a new one. It looks like we're on the Kurumi route, somehow.